predictions time with your gophers. We're bringing Tristan Spanford back with the squad. We're hitting it quick. We're doing all the numbers, so be sure to tune in. Be sure to check it out because the gophers are taking on the Spartans, and it's going to be the one to remember. Hey, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. All right, welcome into Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm here with Tristan Spanford. You should know him and love him by now. You probably missed out on his beautiful face last week, but he's back. And if you're listening on the audio, you can check us out on YouTube and that's where you would see his beautiful face. So just want to give you a quick shout out, but Tristan, glad to have you back. It's good to be back. It was too long. One week, one week off was too much for me. It was too much. I, I was I, take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to jump right in because last week I talked about who I thought were the contenders and pretenders. So we're going to do the same thing for you. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of Nebraska and I'm going to get rid of Northwestern for you just because, you know, why waste the time? Why waste the valuable time of the listeners so that leaves 12 schools you can pick six contenders four pretenders and you can put two tbds if you would like so if you're just really not sure now i can list these schools off for you one by one and just go with your gut and let's hear what you got so the first one is ohio state they're a contender they're a contender and i'm gonna be honest i slept on them after we played them week one last year because halftime, we was in it. We were I, we were in it looking good. You know, Mo goes down, some things happen, and I wasn't I wasn't sold on C.J. Stroud, but that man can throw the rock. He 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 looks very good. I will. I, they are contenders. Absolutely, I thought that one was pretty chalk for you. But how about Michigan? Michigan, I I still think they're a contender too. They they look good. They I mean, Harbaugh's got those boys running. He they. They're a contender as well. I think those those are my two that I'm for sure th- just the usual Big Ten East. Right, right. That's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Now we're jumping into further teams in the East, including Penn State. Where do you have them? <sighs> Penn State, they – I mean, every. I mean, it's early in the year and everyone's kind of played some guys, but they, they look decent. Last week, was it? Their offense was clicking. Mm-hmm. Um I'm excited for us to play them in their whiteout game, notoriously. Just they're not good in the whiteout game, which feels good. But I think they're, I think they're also a contender as well. I'm, I'm not going to give them a pretender stamp because I think things look good. They're well coached too. All right. How about the team we're facing this weekend, Michigan State? Now they're not ranked anymore. When they were ranked, I was still saying that they might be a pretender. I think last year might have been a little bit of a fluke. Now I know we're gonna get into it, but I, I I don't I don't love the 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 spot we're getting them at, especially coming off their loss last week. But I still think they're pretender. They're not they're not the same as they were last year. All right, so that's three contenders and one pretender for you. And now we're moving to our rival, Wisconsin. What are you thinking so far? They are definitely pretenders. This Ooh, year. okay. They're not, like they're not. It's not the same for them. And I don't know if it's an off year, if it's a rebuilding year again, I don't follow them the same that I follow the Gophers. I don't follow really anyone the same as I follow the Gophers. But from what they look like so far, I mean, I mean, yeah, they beat New Mexico state and you could, I know you've gotten into it, how they've beaten, you know, they've beaten them when they put up 66 against them. I think it was 67, but yep. Yep. A lot of points. It's a lot of points, but it was New Mexico state and they still, I don't think statistically weren't, even touching what we were touching. So I, I don't know. I, I still am not, I'm not sold on Graham Mertz and you know, it's to be seen, but they're still Wisconsin. And I know when we play them, they're going to play us hard, but I'm giving right. them the pretend right now. All right. So that's where we differ so far, but I like it. You know, I hope they actually are pretenders. Now <laughs> we're going to move to a team that's undefeated still right now. And that is Maryland. Maryland. I, What's to his brother's name? Uh, Talia. 
Oh yeah. I, I, I really, I don't know why, but even when he was a freshman, I really like him. And I, I obviously I want us to win, but I, I will, I would like to see him succeed. Right. Um, I watched them. I want to say against S. No, not SDSU. They were just playing at the same time as them. I can't remember who it was, but they they look like they're they were kind of still in some growing pains. But they look like they might be contenders. I'd I'd like to see them be contenders. Um, I like a good. I like watching a mobile quarterback. So right. We'll, I'm gonna give them a. I'm gonna give them a contender for now. All right, showing love to the Maryland squad. Got to love it now. Purdue. Who we got not this weekend, but next weekend. Purdue, I think, is a contender. I I I don't know. I don't know what it is about them, but they seem like they're tough this year. And they're they they played did they play Penn State already? I should yeah. know the answer to yep. they play. But um they played Penn State pretty closely, I wanna say. It was a it yeah, was a yeah. it was down to the wire. They probably should have won the game, but kind of gave it away. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that they 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 might have something clicking this year. And but I will say I think it might be a one off how Michigan State was last year. Okay. I think they're gonna click this year and it's gonna hit, but I think they might be back to Purdue next year. All right. Now we got the people we know and love, Iowa. Pretenders. Pretenders. <laughs> what, they a touchdown all year? One yeah. touchdown? Two, maybe? <laughs> it's crazy. It's it's been rough. We have, we have Mo has three times, four times the amount of touchdowns they have in the whole season just by himself. So yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's happening with them, but it is. They are pretenders. You don't know what's happening with them, but you dang sure like what is happening to them. I do. <laughs> I do. We have them at home this year, so we, we do. Can... We do have them at home this year. I mean, I mean, I, 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 Iowa. I would. I take oh, that. Back. I got you. I got you. I it's can't been you. so many years, and I, it's gonna feel good beating them at home. Don't get me wrong, because I want to be there to see it. But we just never can beat them at Iowa, and I know that would feel good. Just to <laughs> like the sad waves to the hospital. Because they're getting beat down so much, you know, like, like, ah, oh, that would feel, that'd feel great. <laughs> All right. I already know where you're going with this one, but Minnesota. Oh, we're contenders. I, I've said it, like I said before, the West is ours to lose. The, the only team that I think can beat us in the West is us. We, we need to stay out of our own way and stay out of our own head. And I think we can, you know, it, it's ours for the taking. All right, so then you got three schools left. For first or next one up is Indiana. I have not watched one Indiana game this year. I don't know who they've played. Have they played? Who have they? Have, they haven't had a Big Ten game yet, right? They beat Illinois. They beat Illinois. So I'm just gonna put a pretender on them. Okay. Um, okay. It's probably off basis, but I just so you got two TBDs too, so you could throw that on there. Oh, you really oh you're right. Right. Okay, I want to give them a TBD, actually. I'm going to give them a TBD. All right, next school is Rutgers. I love I love Rutgers. Shout out to Mayan. But I I just think that they are also pretenders. And I, it hurts me to say, because they, they, put, they put some good games together, but I think once they get in, into their conference schedule as well, mm-hmm. it's going to – then things tough. are – it is going to be tough for them. And they, they, I don't think their schedule is very favorable either this year. So, All right. Then the final school is Illinois. Illinois, I'm going to put a TBD on them too. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm undetermined. I haven't seen enough film. Hey, I mean, they, I'm with you. I, they beat Virginia pretty handily. They beat – or no, they lost to IU. So that was kind of a weird one. But – their first game was also pretty – like, they beat Wyoming, like, 37-6 to six or something like that. So, they've yeah, just been seems, all it, over the board. Yeah, it seems like they could be a team that are kind of in their own way as well. You know, right. like, that they, it's – they're beating themselves when they lose. All right. So, that's enough of the contenders and pretenders. You got the guys, Ohio State, Michigan, uh, Penn State, Maryland, Purdue, and Minnesota were your contenders. Then pretenders were Wisconsin, Michigan State – Iowa and Rutgers and then the two TBDs were Indiana and Illinois I feel like we're pretty same there I think the only thing is I had Maryland as a TBD and Wisconsin as a contender but basically the same I think a lot will shake out this week there's 33 teams that are undefeated still seven of them are in the Big Ten 
And we could see a bunch of those fall off this weekend. So something to stay tuned for. Now we're going to move into over-unders and we're going to have a little bit of fun with it because first we got to talk about our friends over at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is literally the easiest way to have a fantasy experience. And this episode is brought to you by them. The easiest place to spice up college football season. So I'm going to tell you, we're going to have some fun with this right now. I pulled up the lines. All you have to do for underdog is you go and you pick five lines that you enjoy. It can be from any game you want in the college space, as long as it is on the app. Now, the Minnesota and the Michigan State game is on there. So Tristan, spur of the moment, gut feeling, immediately what comes to mind. We're going to do the five. I'm going to put $5 down, and I'm going to try to 20 times my money with this thing. So if we hit on this, we're going to get some good cash off of $5. So the first line is Tanner Morgan, 169 and a half pass yards. So 107, do you think he'll get above 170? Yes or no? I'm going to say yes. Uh, Do you want me to dive into that? No, no, we don't have to dive into it. We can jump back into it right after we finish the ad. But uh, how about Mo Ibrahim, 127 and a half rush yards. So do you think he'll get 128? Or higher, or do you think he'll be lower than that? I'm thinking lower. All right. Right under. Then, ooh, this one's going to hit home for you. Your brother is on the app right now. Brevin Spanford, 29 and a half receiving yards. Higher or lower? I'm never going to bet the under on that. I'm going over every time. Every time. It could say I went over on it last week, and I hit, and I'm right there with you. Now, now we have to do the flip side. We have to do Michigan State, but you got to think about our defense too. Now, Peyton Thorne, their quarterback, is at 236 yards, higher than that or lower? Lower. Lower. All right. And then the last one is their running back, Jalen Berger, 66 and a half rushing yards. Do you have him higher than that or lower? I'm going to say higher. All I think right. Higher. There it is. So it's that easy, folks. We just did it right here on the show with you. All you have to do is go pick your favorite ones, put some money down, and then you can 20 times your money. It's easy to play and available in over 30 states. Just pick between two and five players of any team, not just yours, and decide if they will finish higher or lower. You can sign up with the promo code locked on, which is one word locked on and underdog will double your first deposit of up to hundred dollars. So if you put in hundred dollars, you get hundred dollars free. That's $200 right there in your account. All you have to do is go to underdogfantasy.com or download the app from the app store underdog fantasy app. That's underdog fantasy promo code locked on one word and use that for the college pick them today. All right. So yeah, we're going to definitely dive into some of those numbers because I'm with you. I feel like, I feel like Tanner Morgan over 170. I'm with you. I think that their pass defense is so terrible that that's where we're going to try to attack them. Mo Ibrahim under 128. I'm with you. I think it's, a, I think it'll be close to it though. I think it, that's a really good line. I think he'll probably be in that like 120 range. That's what I think. It'll be right above, right above a hundred, right below one twenty. I think, I think he's going to find that sweet spot. I mean, last last week, obviously he ate, but right, you know, their run defense is the strongest part of their defense. So. Right, and I still haven't heard if Jacob Slade is going to be back for Michigan State or not, and he is a huge weapon when it comes to the run defense. So it's probably better to play that one on the safe side. Now, this is easy money on Brevin's line, in my opinion. Easy money. We just lost Crab, and Brevin is the second highest on the team in receiving yards right now. Who's going to match up with them? Their number one linebacker is hurt. Their number one safety is hurt. And, like, what are you doing? I'm very excited. I think think the passing game is really going to open up this week, too. And, I I mean, as long as Brev can, you know, hold on to the ball and not bother (laughs) You know, and then I think there's a good chance Tanner won't throw any picks. You know, I'm I'm a firm believer if you can touch it, you can catch it. And yeah, so, I know you were ribbing him after oh, that one, not, probably, huh? I let him live for one second after that, not, <laughs> not. <laughs> but no, I think it, it, that does seem like a very good line. Without, I mean, it sucks that Chris went down. You know, I wish the best for him, but I hope um, they can still maintain that offense. And we got guys that are ready to step up too. So right. 
Peyton Thorne's line, I was good with you there, lower than 236 yards. Our defense is good. Like, I don't care how good he might have looked, which he didn't look great in the last couple games, but he's been on edge. He's been all right. But our defense is good. So, like, that's fear money. The rushing one, I think this one's going to make or break our line right here. 66 and a half for that running back. It's tough. It's tough because we've been a run stopping team, but that's not a ton of rushing yards either. So that's what I thought. I thought that line seemed kind of low. That's why I was like, it seems attainable. Even if like, think of if he finishes the day with 70 yards, like that's a decent day defensively for us. I mean, I mean, you know, if that's the total of the team's yards. So I I don't know. I I think that seems attainable. And I mean, I don't think they're going to find as much success in the air. So they're going to have to, you know, try to try to run the ball a little bit more. So. Well, five dollars down. If we win, I get a hundred back. I'll send you fifty if we get the dub. So that's where it is. Um, but I do have a couple of lines that aren't in that app that I do want to talk about. The Gophers are the line is three points right now. Do you have the Gophers winning? And if so, do you have it by more than three points? Um, I think I do have them winning. I I, I don't I don't ever really gamble on the Gophers too close to home but (laughs) I I I do think that they win by more than three um I was surprised at where the line landed being that you know we're on the road and right right I I mean they're giving us a lot of respect being that our schedule was so uh so simple so easy coming up to this but I I like where it's at I agree with it I was just surprised you know because we don't get any respect anywhere else right I'm right there with you I was like dang Vegas has given us the respect can we get the pollsters to give us that respect too like can we get a little leeway here I mean dip our toes in that bottom that bottom of the 25 you know somewhere down there right all right another one is Dalen Wright do you have him scoring a touchdown this week so one touchdown is the line here I think with 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 Chris gone he needs to you know he he I think he's going to step up and you know be in that that number one receiver slot now and he needs to score a touchdown I think he will he's got the skills we see it every week he you know he's he goes and gets the ball he finds the ball I, th- I think he's going to have some success this week all right now the Gophers score do you have it over or under 24 and a half points so above 24 or 24 or below I think it'll be over 24. I do think obviously it's going to be a closer game, but I think, I think we're going to put in the work, you know, Um, you know, obviously I don't think we're going to shut them out. Our defense is very good, but I mean, it's still Michigan state. They're well coached. They, you know, they're going to put numbers up, but you know, that's football. And I, I do think we're going to outscore them. We're, we'll have more than 24. All right. And then the last over under I have for you is Michigan state. Will they have over 275 total yards now I want to caveat this this defense last week gave up 227 total yards but 136 of those yards came against the third string guys and a couple of the second string guys so initially they only had 91 through three quarters ahead of that the other teams also uh, the first game it was under 100 total yards and the second game I believe it was like right around 120 total yards so this is almost doubling what any anybody else has put on our defensive ones so and what do you think all, oh i i think that's got to be under i mean 275 275 yeah. if they have if they put up 91 and this is a this is one of the better defenses they're going to see all year i'm very confident in that we can we're going to keep them well under that well when i say 91 i mean our last opponent not michigan state oh, i mean oh, oh. Colorado was under 91. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Our defense. I, was, I thought you were saying that about last week, and I was like, I thought the game was a lot closer than that, but maybe I didn't watch it. Um, but, no, I, I, I still think we are, we are one of the best defenses they're going to see all year, and I, I think that that line is, is right where it should be, but I think we're going to get under that. They're going to they're gonna hold them to, you know, maybe they get one big play here and there, but I think we're going to hold them off. All right. Well, that is going to do our over-unders. We're going to close this show with the predictions. That's coming up next. 
All right. So thank you for listening to Lockdown Golden Gophers and making us your first listen when it comes to gopher sports, especially daily. We got this going for you Monday through Friday, and we've got Tristan joining us each and every week on one of those shows each week. So be sure to tune in. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube where we're building the channel up. We're going to jump into some predictions here. And first one is the same as always. Guess the final score of the game. I'm so bad at this. I always, <laughs> always feel, I'm like, I feel like I'm going to give a, a scoregami score when I'm done. I can't do football math in my head. Um, I think the Gophers put up, oh, 30, what is, what would it be? 34? Is that a real? 35, 35, 35 would be. 35, let's go 35, 14. I think we hold them to two touchdowns. Ooh, that's a that's a big gap there. You're saying we're beating that three point spread by a lot. Oh yeah, I'm 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 very confident. You know, okay. almost blindly confident, and that's <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 okay with being the irrational irrationally confident fan. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna go 31 for the Gophers, and I'm torn between 21 and 24 for Michigan State. I think. Vegas is usually pretty smart about these things. So I'm going to go closer to the spread number and I'm going to say 31, 24 Gophers. We win by a touchdown. I would, I wouldn't even be mad at that as long as we get a win. And it sounds like that would be a much more entertaining game as well. <laughs> All right. Who's the best Gopher on the offensive side of ball in this game? Um, I like Dalen Wright. When we were talking about that earlier, you know, with crab gone, I think it, it's, not that he was, you know, he was, you know, not shining before, but I think it really is going to be his time to shine. You know, he's going to even, even on the, when he's not getting the ball, you know, he's pulling people away. Like they have to honor him as a receiver. So I think, I think he's going to have a day. All right. Well, the easy answer here would be Tanner Morgan because their past defense is super weak, but I'm not going with the easy answer. I'm going with who I call the X factor of the week, in my opinion. And that's your brother. I'm going with Brev. Brev is going to be the offensive player this week, and I think he's going to put the Big Ten on notice. Now let's flip it to the defensive side of the ball. Who's going to be the best player on defense? I don't think I've gotten one of these right yet, correct? I think we've each got one right, and it was very early. I think we but both. Te- technically, the defense hasn't let up any points, so we're both kind of right. <laughs> um, let's go with Rush. I, I want to see him get after it this week. I just, again, that with a name like that, you have to be an animal on the defensive line. Like, right. that's a that's an NFL name right there. Like, <laughs> I, I'm going with him. I think he's going to have a day. He's going to tear it up. My gut is saying I should go with the safety. Last week, I picked Tyler Newbin, which he had a pretty good game. It wasn't all in the box score, but if you're watching what he's doing on the field, the dude is all over the place. So I'm going to go with his partner in crime this week. I'm going with Howden. It's a Howden week, and he's my pick. Now, you, I'm guessing your answer is going to be the same here, but who will have the most yardage for the wide receivers this week? So you can't pick Brev because he's tight end. So wide receivers, who will have the most yardage? I'm going Dalen. I, I think he's going to, you know, he's going to light it up. I, he's, he's, he's shown glimpses all last year and every, everyone, everything I always read last year is always inconsistent, inconsistent. And I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it. You know, I think the opportunities didn't present themselves for him as often as they did for, you know, like crab and stuff. So I think, I think he's going to click and, and people are really going to see that. Yeah. Like, like he's not dropping anything. I like that. I like it. I, I talked about it, I think, yes, on yesterday's show that I think if Dalen can have the confidence, if he can just know, like, yeah, I'm that dude and show that on the field, he could be extremely special. I think that that is one thing that Crab does that somebody needs to take that up this this rest of this year. But um, for most yardage, I'm going to go with Daniel Jackson. Um, he was on a pitch count last week and Coach Fleck admitted that. He said he will not be on a pitch count this week. And I think they've yep. been really hesitant on letting him get back to the early action. They didn't let him play in the first two games, though he was out on the field pregame doing cuts and everything. So I think they're ready to unleash the beast. And I think he's going to have a lot of yardage this week. Yeah, I'm excited. I think I think they're going to open, you know, we're going to see the full playbook and, you know, it's not going to be any conservative football. And, you know, the starters are going to have to play four quarters this week and, I, I'm I'm so excited. I I again I hate I hate that we we've been so hot 
and then we jump right into Michigan State. But I think now that I'm seeing Michigan State, you know, this is better than playing, you know, I guess no one else. Colorado. <laughs> right. You know, this is going to be more entertaining, and it, it's it's going to be exciting to see them, you know, really play a full four quarters of football and you know not let up on anything. All right, two questions left. The first one, we neither one of us has ever gotten it right yet. What uniforms are they going to be wearing at Michigan State? Oh, man. Well, uh, I, I keep seeing the throwbacks from the last time they played Michigan State. The yellow helmets and the gray, those actually were pretty cold. I didn't. I don't mind those. Uh, Michigan's going to have the green. I'm saying we're going white tops, yellow bottoms. I'm white top. Ooh, that's a good one. White tops, yellow bottoms. I'm going with you. We're locking that in, and hopefully we'll both hit for the first time in four out. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're closing the show off with the question everybody wants to know. Will the Gophers be ranked after this game? What are you thinking? 4-0. and There's only going to be a handful of teams that are 4-0, and, and we're and still, we're still beating Michigan State. I think we have to. We have to. We have to be twenty-five at least, right? I, you would I think. think I, you would think. You know, I think if we beat Michigan State, then it is gonna. Then people are gonna be like, okay, you know, this. You know, this wasn't New Mexico State. Like, we're these are. This is real deal. Who else do they have on their their, you know, schedule? I I'd like to think so. All right. So if they get ranked, where would they be? What's the number you think they come in at? I still think 25, 25, okay. 24 at the highest. And and I'm okay with that. You know, I'm fine with us having to prove ourselves, but I'd like to see a little bit of respect for where we're at now. You know, I get it's difficult because we haven't played anybody, but I think after Michigan State, we deserve 25. And then we go on from there. Once we beat Purdue, Penn State, then we really can, then, then, then we'll be there. All right, if we win this game, I say we're ranked as well. I'm going to go with 22. I don't know why. The number's just screaming out to me. I think because of how the defense could show out, if you show out against all these lesser opponents, outscoring them 149 to 17, and then you do it against a team that's the team right outside of the top 25, they still have the respect of that. They're right outside of the top 25. I think if you hold them to limited yardage and a low score, people are going to be put on notice. So I'm going with 22 there. Now for all those who are superstitious, I'm going to go ahead and knock on this wood desk because Tristan and I have just been jinxing this entire weekend with this right here. So that's just in case, but it's going to be a good one. I'm excited, man. I'm very excited too. I'm, I'm super excited. It feels like, it feels like we just got through preseason almost and now we're <laughs> right. Right. We're, we're real football. <laughs> Real football, the Big Ten is officially kicking off this weekend. Be sure to cheer, cheer on your Gophers. That's going to do it for us. We will see Tristan next week. Hopefully, we're talking about a 4-0 Gophers team heading into homecoming. That's going to do it for us. This is Kane Rob signing off. This is Tristan signing off. Row the boat. Sky Uma. Go Gophers.